It's almost time to get the motor fitted into my electric motorcycle frame. But before I do that, I need to get a couple of things finished off on the battery. I need to get the battery mounted first, but before I can do that, I need to get the box to its correct dimensions. I need to grind down the welds, and to do this it's made easy with a flappy disc on a grinder. And I just finish off the corners on the workbench with a file. The last thing to finish off on the battery assembly was the end plate. It didn't quite go to plan in the last episode. I managed to sort it this time by changing the printer settings. I increased the cooling and changed the infill density. This seemed to work. All I've got to do is quickly clean up the edges and then I can fit the multi-plugs and handle. To mount the end plate into the box, I need to drill a few holes. I lined the end plate up with a box and marked where these holes lied. I obviously knew the depth of these holes from the design. So I simply marked them and punched them. First I went through with a 3mm drill bit, followed by a 6mm to get the desired width. The head of the bolt also had to be flush with the outer surface of the box. This meant I had to countersink every single bolt. The nuts snap into the captive openings I designed into the 3D print and they screwed in a tree. So now I can offer up the battery and motor into my frame. But what motor did I go for? This, a five kilowatt continuous DC brushless motor from Golden Motor. There's a couple of reasons I went for this size and that's all down to the aims of this project. I want a bike that'll do a maximum of 60 mile an hour and will hopefully have a range of 100 miles when two batteries are fitted. So this five kilowatt sustained motor has a peak output of 10 kilowatts, which will give me that maximum speed of 60 mile an hour. So the second goal for this bike was to do 100 miles. And to do that, the motor has to be efficient. And all motors have a specific RPM and load where they are most efficient. For this motor, that is 4,000 RPM drawing 50 amps, which is about four and a half thousand watts. So this motor has a peak usable RPM of 6,000. So that means if the bike is geared to do just over 60 mile an hour, the most efficient RPM, 4,000 RPM on the motor, will be at around 45 mile an hour road speed. So, and that is the speed I assume will be my average speed over a longer ride of say 100 miles. So the bike will be running at most efficient for the majority of a longer ride. But obviously the best motor always comes down to what you want out of it. If I want to do 150 mile an hour, I'm gonna need a much bigger motor. With it all roughly mounted in the frame, I was really happy with how it turned out. So I marked on the battery box where the external frame was going to run and then it was time to make this frame on the bench. Now this had to be made out of L-shaped steel. To mark and cut all the pieces so I can then weld it together. Every other end piece has to be notched. This is so all corners are covered. And then it was on to welding. I decided to tack it in situ around the box and then move it over to my metal bench for final welding. Now I am no professional welder. I can just about stick two bits of metal together. The welds are all going well on the metal bench, but I decided to test fit the battery and there was a couple of little issues. The heat had warped a couple of the sections, so I had to straighten them. I'll smooth all these welds down at a later date. But it's strong and secure and it fits the frame really well. So I'm just gonna put four or five really good tacks onto the frame for now. I'll weld it all properly when it's all apart, ready for painting so I can flip it over and get it to the angles I wanted to for welding. I also definitely think I need an extra support at the bottom of the battery box. This thing is gonna weigh almost 20 kilograms. But it worked out a treat. It slides in and out easily. Also, it's really accessible with the tank cover removed. Next up, I wanted to get the motor controller mounted. I know I wanted to get it mounted underneath the seat, but this meant I had to get the 3D printer out. There was a bit of the old battery tray in the way, so I needed to grind this out. The mount was designed in Fusion 360, and with that printing, it was time to get on with the motor mount. I first need to make sure the motor is mounted squarely in the frame. I did this with an engineer's square and straight edge. 
Mountain points for the motor are only on the output shaft side, so I ended up removing the rear lugs for extra space. It was interfering the motor body. This allowed me to get the motor as close to the pivot point of the swing arm as possible. When there's a big gap between these two points, you get loads of chain slap. So I took some measurements and designed a 3D printed mock-up. Now this part will be made out of aluminium or steel at a later date, but 3D printing is the perfect process to check your measurements and check what you're making is gonna be right. And this was the piece I printed. And amazingly, it was spot on first time. The motor was just under the chain line, but by the time you load up the rear end, it'll all come into line. But I also, but I also realized I definitely wanted an extra mount for this motor. This would be in the form of another bracket coming from the mount that is welded directly to the frame. The motor needs to be really securely mounted. This is because they're continuously trying to turn themselves. If you think about the power put into a motorcycle rear wheel, exactly the same amount of force is applied upon the motor housing trying to turn itself. I'll get this extra support made up next week.